Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to our channel. In this voyage, I'll be doing an unboxing and overviewing of the very famous Dell XPS 15 9500. Is this the dream ultrabook to do it all in 2020? I don't know yet, so let's get straight into it. of the XPS this year is very compact. A little context for you guys, I actually have unboxed the 2018 version of the XPS but it wasn't good so I didn't post it up. We can imagine how portable this XPS will be based on the appearance of the box itself. Oh wow, it is heavy. I wasn't expecting that to be honest. This year Dell offers a very nice packaging. This indicates the very promising and prestige laptop inside. You see that? That's what I'm talking about. It is truly premium even there is a magnetic flap that locks the box. Oh wow, this was not so light. Well, let's put this aside and let's see what we have inside. I can see two documentations. Even the folder feels nice. What is this? Just normal documentations. Trash. Bruh. So we have a power brick together with the power cable and a USB-C dongle. Can we show Dell some respect for including this? I mean, Apple's over here charging you $60 for this guy. There is a whale iconic here, 100% recycled plastic and 25% box material from the ocean. Good features, but I will still keep the box anyways. The box itself still looks magnificent, right? Here we go, the star itself. It's a sleek looking laptop, but don't let the size fool you. It's actually a lot heavier than what you might expect. It's very good looking. Weigh around 1.9 kilogram plus the power brick will bring you to approximately 2.4 kilo. Don't withdraw your buying intention just because of its weight. It's still a very slim yet powerful laptop. Speaking of power, this laptop equipped with the Intel Core i7 together with the Nvidia GTX 1650 Ti. On paper, it is actually even more powerful than mid-range gaming laptop that worth a grand and a half in Australia. For appearance, at first glance, there isn't a difference in terms of design from the previous XPS generation. But it all comes down to the user experience for me to discover that it had changed a lot. This year, the XPS 15 is a lot slimmer in size and constructed with full aluminum makes it extremely durable and rigid. From the outside, it looks super compact and well built. Another thing is worth mentioning is the hinge. This hinge, hands down the best laptop hinge I've ever used. When opening and closing the laptop, it feels so smooth and comfortable. It's also rigid too. Unlike the previous generation, you can now open the XPS with one hand because last year hinges are quite stiff, therefore hard to get it open. The port situation is kind of disappointing to me, but it's good news for content creators because it's equipped with only USB-C and Thunderbolt ports. You get two Thunderbolt 3 on the left side, and the right side is just a normal Type-C with a full-size SD card slot. 
The interior of this XPS is constructed with superb quality too. Dell chooses it with that carbon fiber palm rest and it was very pleasant to use, smooth to the touch, spacious wrist rest, and very minimal dirt or sweat attraction. I really do think that this year, this XPS is the most fearful competitor for Apple on the Windows side. Two rows of speakers located on the top surface, topping it off with a massive, massive trackpad, which brings the XPS to MacBook-like experience. The sound of the speakers is crisp and has a little bass to it. It can easily fill up your room. Every previous XPS is kind of like a dull or boring working laptop mainly used for productivity, right? But this one is different. Because of those speakers and an astonishing 16x10 display has enabled this laptop to not only be ideal for productivity purposes, but also a stunning media consumption device. We didn't have that much stuff, but like, Still quite. Dell also revamped the keyboards for this year's model. The layout of these keys are less spaced out and more balanced. It has good key travels and feedback. Individual keys need a little more actuation force. As a result, the typing experience is much more pleasant and joyful to type on compared to the previous XPS. Furthermore, the touchpad is also improved and it is larger than 52% compared to the older XPS. Wow, Apple should be aware of this competitor. I'm so grateful now that finally, a window manufacturer acknowledged how important an Apple-sized touchpad can affect the overall user experience. The touchpad is responsive and pleasant to use. Scrolling through pages without a noticeable delay and multi-function gestures work flawlessly. In fact, the improvement of the touchpad is the second major change on the XPS this year. The first one being the screen. Dell definitely knows how to set itself apart from the competition by updating the display into a 16x10 and almost four bezel-less sides. All of that just makes the laptop so, so charming and I really do think that this is the feature that most of us would be willing to spend our money on, right? Bezel-less display helps a 15-inch laptop to fit inside a 13-inch shell, like a hermit crab. Once again, thank you Dell for being environmentally friendly. Being such a thin bezel, but Dell did manage to put a webcam on top of the display and support Windows Hello face recognition too. I also feel like when working on this laptop, I was able to achieve nearly max productivity level due to the screen makes it feel so natural and concentratable. Color accuracy for a creator laptop like this? I wasn't so surprised it was equipped with an IPS panel and a wide range of color coverage. Brightness for this laptop is insane with up to 520 nits. Usually for indoor use, I only need 20% should be more than enough for me. HDR content is playable and I do think this is the ideal laptop for creators. I recommend that you just get the 1080p option because for a 15 inch display, I don't think we will appreciate much for the 4K. Or perhaps save yourself a couple hundred bucks and get an external monitor instead. While you do miss out on a touchscreen if you're going with the 1080p though, a massive touchpad would compensate for that. For battery usage, an 87 watt per hour is fairly substantial. It can easily get me from a whole study day with just web browsing, writing notes, and media consumption. An hour of opening and using three tabs of Google Docs and YouTube Play in the background at 40% of brightness will take you 20% of battery. So technically you get five to eight hours of battery life depending on your usage and how much power is required to run the program. 
Overall, the XBS 9500, in my opinion, is the best ultrabook to do it all in 2020 that you can get. The combination of design, durability, touchpad, keyboard, and that incredible 16x10 display makes this the best all-around laptop and sets itself apart from the competition. So there is my Dell XBS 2020 review. What do you guys think of this laptop? Comment down below to share your thoughts and I'll catch you guys up in our next voice. Bye!